today. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a whole week, whole week of no vlogging. I have to say it's been rather nice. <laughs> I was really um, chasing my tail the last few weeks with the vlogs and kind of filming, editing and trying to upload all on a Wednesday and it was becoming a bit of a rush and I felt like the vlogs were a bit messy and I thought, no, we've got to start. We've got to have a little break, catch up and kind of sit down. I've done sort of put down some ideas and just had a bit of a reset and so hopefully the vlog should be a little bit better over the next few weeks and I should you know be able to be a bit ahead of myself rather than trying to do everything on one day which is never a good plan. Thank you for everyone that voted in my poll on YouTube the other day. Really helpful. I didn't think that, that many of you would do it but you did so honestly it was so useful. So you'll have already guessed for the fact that I was asking about adverts in my videos but obviously because you clever lot managed to get me over a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours my channel could be monetized and I've really been umming and ahhing whether to do it or not because my channel's only small I didn't want to kind of push people away by having ads on my videos and I know that what I would earn off of the adverts would be tiny so initially I was thinking oh, I just won't do it I'll let the channel grow a bit more and then I thought actually do you know what times are hard <laughs> We're all feeling the pinch. And I just thought, if I can earn a little bit off the vlogs, I've been doing it for two and a half years, if I can earn a little bit off of them and I can put it back into the horses, I'd gratefully appreciate that right now. So, as I said, it's going to be pennies. And so, I think it's going to be a very long process, but, you know, every penny counts, as they say. And so, I have started to monetize some of the videos. Not all of them. Um, I've left off, like, the dressage test videos and a few of the old ones I've not bothered doing. But I will start to do some of them especially sort of the exercise videos and it's kind of the videos that tend to get lots of views um, because like I say it will really help with the horses and hopefully allow me to do more fun things on the channel in the future well that's what I'm hoping anyway so thank you to all you guys that actually gave me the confidence to do it because most of you said you weren't worried and I'm the same like I don't really mind watching um adverts on people's vlogs I know how hard they've worked on them um they deserve to earn from them so I never, you know, I never worry. And quite often I'll let adverts run the whole way through and I'll kind of, you know, send a message or go and make a cup of tea or something like that. Because like I say, I really do know how hard people work and they deserve the money from the advertising. But I'll let you know how much I, like how much in the, I don't know, how, I don't know anything about it. So, but I'll let you know like the earnings from it because I'm so interested and that was one of the things that really kept me hooked on YouTube. I was fascinated by how much these YouTubers earn, especially in the early days. Like, is it pennies? Is it a couple of pounds? What? Is, I have no idea. No idea. But I've tried to keep the adverts as minimal as possible. So currently, I think, unless YouTube's played around with it, um, I've tried to leave them just at the beginning of the vlogs so that the vlogs can stay clear throughout. But we'll see. It's all a minefield. I'm learning as I go along. So as we all know, it's now September. Beautiful month, love, love September, a gorgeous time of year, normally quite warm and nice. However, it's definitely like the entrance to the descent to winter, isn't it? Like, you love it, but you know you're going downhill from now on. <laughs> and already, like, how much are the nights drawing in already? It's half past seven and it's like pretty gloomy out. I'm thinking, nah, slow down, slow down. I'm not ready for it. I'm not ready for winter at all this year. Don't want it. Not going there. Not up for it. However, I do feel September is a good month to get lots of things done. So these are the things I like to try and get done in September. I'm going to bring you along. Kind of yard job, horse jobs, all that kind of thing. Oh, hello, Bills. Bills, oh, goodness. You lot are all disgusting. Your rugs are appalling. This rug, not even a week old after being washed. Are you right up there? Down there, I should say. I'm up here. You're down there. Oh, these flies are just horrible, aren't they? I'll get you in in a second. And get out the flies. Um, yeah, so these are all the jobs... I like to do the horses and the yacht kind of in preparation for it getting colder and you know the weather changing and that kind of thing I think it's a good time it's a good time of year to get everything you've been putting off done and also just thinking ahead so I'm going to bring you along for some of the things I th think are really good to start like cracking on with so first up is bedding I have not got much left as you can see um so as we get closer to winter sometimes bedding goes up in price or people start buying it in bulk because they think, oh my goodness, we've got to get it in. My advice is get it early. Like, start thinking about buying it in bulk now because hopefully the price will still be okay-ish. I mean, bedding is incredibly expensive. But also, you're not going to risk, like, missing out because I guarantee you get into, like, I don't know, November, December time and everyone suddenly thinks, oh my God, we need some more bedding. And suddenly there's a shortage or something. So I'm going to do the same. Buy it in bulk and try and get it in earlier with the hope that it's reasonably priced and they don't run out and then you don't get stuck in the middle of winter so i reckon september is the last good drying month for washing rugs like i mean obviously i always chuck kind of thin stable rugs and pieces and stuff in the washing machine but 
I do think they don't dry so well once you get into October. And since next week the weather looks incredible, we've got summer coming back, I am using that time to wash these disgusting kind of Thermotex type rugs that have been in the corner of my tack room for quite some time um, and get them washed and dried and then they can be put away for the winter or whenever they next get used. But I feel like this is, if you've got some big rugs to wash, this is the time to wash them and get them dried. The other thing I'm gonna do is go through all the rugs check i've got what i need for winter check if any need to be thrown away like fly rugs and stuff that have been ripped which i know currently crop has got one that's definitely on its way out and yeah just work out if anything needs replacing because right now there's lots of really good summer sales on in fact this morning i have bought two sweet itch rugs two of the shire ones which are normally like 80 something pounds i got them for 50 which is amazing so i bought coop and sienna one for next year i've also picked up a new lightweight um because coop's one was kind of had a big rip through it and it was quite old so some really good sales on the moment so look out because you know it saves you next year if i want to buy those sweet itch rugs perhaps in march when i suddenly think about using them they're going to be full price so if you can afford it try and get them while they're in the sale i'm also going to pull down these winter turnout rugs which have been hanging out here who've, that have gained a lot of cobwebs and just general dirt i don't tend to send my rugs off to be washed because the thing is you put them back on they go straight in the film they're filthy again so what i will do is put them in the yard <laughs> once the washing machine's finished put them out in the yard and i'm going to like hose them down scrub them with the brush and just get the most of the dirt off and like i say this kind of needs to be done now because any later in the year they just aren't going to dry in time but this lovely rug which is absolutely gorgeous sienna dragged around the turn out pen <laughs> And it picked up all the sand and it's been a nightmare to get it off. In fact, it's, I think I've already tried like scrubbing it once before and I couldn't get it off. So I'm going to give that another go. But all these rugs hooked up need to have that done. So that's another job to be done at this time of year. Next up is giving the hay barn a bit of a sort out. You know what our hay barns are like? They get very messy very easily, you know, dragging bits of hay out here and there and stuffing them in hay nets and mangers and it just goes everywhere. As you can see, it's got a whole bed of hay. Um, I was a bit undecided whether to now go back onto the hay lid or stick with hay for a bit longer. I think I'm gonna stick with the hay for a bit longer. So I'm gonna clear this all up and get rid of it. And then kind of just make sure there's plenty of space for the next lot of hay to come in. But also, again, it's just nice to be doing it this time of year. It's not something you really want to be doing in the middle of winter. So, you know, just a general good time to tidy up, I reckon, September. is lots of, like, packaging and wrappers and stuff that need to go off to either the bin or go and be taken to a recycling place. Just September is a perfect tidying up time, is what I reckon. Hay barn complete. And I'm looking like a tomato. <laughs> it's really warmed up this afternoon. It's quite hot. Right, I'm going to empty this load off. Another thing which I think is really good to do in September is to set yourself some new goals and aims just to kind of get you through those last few months of the year. So things like October, November, December time maybe, just to keep you motivated as the nights draw in. Um, because obviously eventing stops in October, kind of your average show tends to slow up a bit because the ground becomes too wet. And so there's obviously dressage and show jumping things on. It doesn't have to be a competition you're aiming for either. It could be arena hire. It could be maybe just something to work on at home. But set yourself some new goals and hopefully <laughs> when the weather starts to change, that will keep you kind of thinking, right, I will get out there and work the horse because there's things I want to work on. Hello, where have you gone? She says, I've seen something and it's spooky. I think for me with Sienna, it's to keep working on the in-hand work and the dressage movements and to really learn to perfect those. I'm a corporal, probably just to try and do some schooling. <laughs> Recently, he's not done a huge amount of schooling. You stopped again, dear. <laughs> Um, he's not done a huge amounts of schooling, so probably to try and do a little bit more schooling with him to help keep his kind of muscle up and top line and all, and just general condition, especially as he goes into winter. We're still standing. You gonna move? She's like, no, I'm having a lovely look around. Come down our field, which um, I don't know whether it's gonna really excite her or whether she's gonna be fine with it. Who knows, I'll get to find out. So something I think is really good to do in September is check all the trees and hedges around your field um, because it's this time of year that lots of seeds start to drop and not good for your horses. So for example, I'm not entirely sure whether this is a sycamore tree or whether this is an ace or quite what it is. However, it does have, I'm not sure you'll be able to see it on the camera, it does have the kind of little helicopter seedlings like the sycamore trees have hanging up there. And either way, not going to risk my horses eating them. So it's a chance to check all the trees, see what kind of seeds are hanging off of them. 
may be that you have to kind of fence bits off and so on um i for sure will make sure that the horses are no longer in this paddock or at least take a good bit of fencing around it so they can't be tempted to eat the seeds and then up here we've also got a oak tree um which obviously is going to be dropping acorns probably in the next couple of weeks all right at the moment but in the next couple of weeks we'll definitely drop acorns and corporal who's just out there now having a little extra picnic because he's old and he deserves it um he is notoriously bad for eating acorns he absolutely loves them like a truffle pig with them so again these beautiful trees however magnificent they are have to be fenced off so that they can't eat them another job to do it's all like a bit of land management is to look for any ragwort in your fields now obviously you should be looking for ragwort all year round and pulling it up i think i suppose Leo, you're not meant to pull it up with your bare hands you should always wear gloves but if you're like me sometimes you just gotta pick it up then and there because otherwise you'll forget where it is for example that's a ragwort leaf just there um, i'm not going to pull it up now because there's a stinging nettle right in the middle of it so i need to get some gloves on but it's a good time to pull them all out because obviously if they're starting to flower it gets a little bit windy or something one day those seeds will spread go across your field next year you'll have even more ragwort so it's a good time to check all the trees in your paddocks see if anything's poisonous or toxic to your horses and also go around pick up any ragwort with gloves on um so that it doesn't sort of seed itself more across your field and you have 10 tons of stuff next year so a bit of land management for september Another must do for me in September is going for a really good ride. Get out with your horse, take them on a real mega hack, two, three hours long, perhaps check out some bridle paths you've never done before. Enjoy this glorious weather while we've still got it, while the ground is good and the sun is shining. Because I feel like from next month, the weather becomes a little more unpredictable. The ground can get a little bit softer. So I feel like September is the ultimate time to go out exploring. And also if you're like me and have been saying you're gonna do it all summer and have kind of run out of time, now is the time. So get out and enjoy this glorious weather and countryside. Now, my last few jobs that I think are really good to do in September kind of all linked together because it's all about cleaning. <laughs> and first up is lifting the stable mats. We all know this has to be one of the worst jobs because not only are these mats super heavy, when you lift them, the smell is quite unbearable. But if you haven't got around to lifting your mats and giving your stables a bit of a pressure washer out yet this year, then maybe this week is the time to do it because obviously it's so hot. It means that once you've washed the stables out, they should dry really quickly and you should be able to get the mats back in quite fast. Um, you will need probably an extra pair of hands and some muscles because we all know these mats weigh an absolute ton and probably a peg for your nose because you know it's going to stink once you lift them. Oh, is it toasty? <laughs> Excuse the hot look, I've just been pooping in the field. My hair is obviously a fuzzy mess because it's so warm. But another job on the probably the cleaning front for September, giving the tack a really good clean. And I mean, you know, like taking it apart clean, which is something I'm definitely gonna do this week, probably in the tack room. I was gonna say do it out in the sunshine while it's still warm and lovely. Maybe that in the evening, but actually in the middle of the day, you're probably better in the tack room, otherwise you're gonna end up looking like I do right now. Um, so giving the tack a really good deep clean. And finally, I'd say giving a horse a really good wash in September is brilliant. I'd say September, October time is the last kind of couple of months where you can wash them with cold water. I don't have a hot wash, so um, after that I have to do it with the kettle and it's not that easy. And also when it starts to get a bit colder, I certainly don't like to wash corporal because I don't want him getting cold ever. But if you do have a corporal like I do who has allergies and sweet itch and all that sort of jazz, and currently with the season changing and it being cold one minute and warm the next, his coat is a little bit all over the place. So giving him a good wash is good. Also with it being so hot this week, it's quite nice to give the horses a good wash when they come in because they're quite often quite sweaty in the field. It attracts the midges and so on. So September is a good time to give them a really good bath.